clash of clans maker Supercell has joined forces with Internet Matters, a not-for-profit organization on a mission to help keep children safe in the digital world. The pair will work together to ensure children remain safe while playing online games, and will look to provide families with new advice and resources to help achieve that goal. It's a notable partnership for Internet Matters, as having a company of super substitute kind, it could encourage other high-profile members of the games industry to back the initiative. Outlining the importance of the cause, the group pointed to a recent survey yet conducted that showed gaming is the second activity parents are most concerned about when it comes to how their children use their screen time. The first was watching videos. Out of those surveyed, 49% of parents explained they are particularly worried about how their children come into contact and interact with strangers when playing online. With the rise of online and mobile gaming, we have seen a real demand from parents who want to know more about how to manage their children's online gaming and keep them safe whilst playing, commented Internet Matters CEO Carol Imbunting. We are delighted to be working with an organization who is on the cutting edge of mobile gaming technology that shares our vision for improving children's digital well-being. At the 2019 Game Developers Conference, you can look forward to an amazing array of talks from speakers across the video game industry. Across the week, you will hear from industry legends rich experts and amazing advocates, many of whom will want to learn about you and your work as much as you do theirs. During this year's advocacy track, you will get to hear a role BLO access gen of UC. Johnson discussed the making of Roblox Jurassic World educational challenge. To introduce you to Johnson before her talk, we reached out to her for a quick QA. You can now read below. Would you please introduce yourself and talk about your role in game development? I am Genevieve C. Johnson, the senior instructional designer at Roblox, where it's my job to empower students to learn how to code and create games on the Roblox platform, which in turn assures we have more great game developers in the future. I have 10 years experience creating COURSAWA array featuring a variety of game engines, 3D software such as Autodesk Mile, and programming languages. Without spoiling it, what will you be talking about at BD? Our desire to create a strong, diverse developer community led to the creation of a self-paced tutorial on how to make a game on the Roblox platform. The program resulted in over far. 5 million page views and more than 270 000 no games published for the platform. I will talk about why it was important to Roblox to do this, how we scaffold curriculum to keep students motivated, and some of the learnings we had along the way. All of the concepts in this talk are principles I think about when creating CEOURSEWA array for new developers of any age, or for any game engine. Some of them are concepts that do not get talked about enough in education, like progression curves and PK and theory. What excites you most about the future of game development? I am excited for a future where the games industry sees my stories that are authentic to the human experience. I want game development to be just like literature and music, where the imagination and experiences of every culture and walk of life are represented. The game engines and technology we have today allow for a democratization of game development like we have never seen before. And it is my job to ensure the next generation of developers are getting the resources they need to learn, be creative, and ultimately have fun. What's something about your specific field you want your colleagues to know more about? Instructional design and game design have so many similarities. 
They are both about motivating people to learn new skills and keeping them motivated. Tell us about your favorite project you worked on in the last year. It was only just this past year that we launched Dropbox Education. I think a lot of educators use on how they might reach even a few more students, and I feel really lucky to be part of something that's working at such scale. The initiative has given me the chance to meet and collaborate with so many great educators and organizations around the world who are looking to empower students. This is also the first time in my career that all of my work is available for anyone to use and at no cost. Now I can finally show my parents what I do. Bring your team to GD. Register a group of ten or more and save ten percent on conference passes. Learn M O R A H E R A. For more details, O N T D C 2000 on Monday and visit the show's official website. Or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, Oz, Godot Sutra and D D are sibling organizations under parent company Informa. Today's the day Microsoft publicized. How much it earned over the 2018 holiday quarter, and while X console sales were down year over year, the company's games business appears to be flourishing. Notably, Microsoft says that during the three months ending December 31st, its games-related revenue hit four dollars three billion, eight percent higher than it was in the same period a year prior. That encompasses sales of X consoles, X live services, first-party games, and third-party game royalties. And Microsoft says the increase was driven primarily by a 31 percent year-over-year rise in revenues from X software and services. Meanwhile, X hardware sales actually declined year-over-year by 19 percent. Which Microsoft chose up to the launch of its more powerful X One X console during this same quarter last year. Also, the company claims it saw 64 million active X Live users in the month of December, which is about 5 million more than it reported during December of 2017. Microsoft's overall revenues. And payroll FIT XCH rose more than 10 percent year over year, something the company attributes to the strong performance of its cloud tech businesses. Nintendo will bring another franchise to smartphones with the launch of Drive Mario World this summer. The news comes a day after the company chose to push back the launch of Mario Kart Tour for a few months in a bit. To improve the quality of the mobile racer, Drive Mario World will be developed and operated in partnership with Japanese tech company Line Corporation, and has been given an early summer 2019 release window. It will be the seventh mobile game Nintendo has worked on since 2016, following in the footsteps of Metomo, Super Mario Run, Animal Crossing. Pocket Camp, Fire Emblem Heroes, Jungle Lost, and Mario Kart Tour. Regulators in China have approved the monetization of 95 more games, including some from Tencent and Netis. As reported by Reuters, the latest batch of approvals included two titles from Netis and one from Tencent, both of which also had games approved back in January. And takes the total number of approvals since December 20th, 18 to 726. It's welcome news coming off the back of China's lengthy licensing freeze, which prevented developers and publishers from releasing new titles in the country at the bulk of 2018, and resulted in the video game market witnessing its slowest first half growth in a decade. According to recent reports, the freeze created a backlog of games that Chinese regulators are currently trying to work through. Many old new submissions will not be looked at until those older games have been assessed.
Google has lofty ambitions for its coming cloud, based game platform Stadia, many of which include giving game developers and players alike the ability to approach video games in a different way. Speaking during Figma Speed Zoom turn later today, Google VP Andam Phil Harrison said that one of the key goals of Stadia is to change the perceived value of games and make games as a whole a more discoverable medium. Discoverability is an important topic for any storefront, and one that many platforms struggle to deal with as the number of games they support increases. To solve this issue to fast idea, Google wants to step away from traditional storefronts and the discoverability issues that come with both physical retailers and digital catalogs. Fast idea.